Hello everyone and welcome to this Spotlight special episode. Ten years after the Fukushima disaster, we went to the Fukushima Daiichi power plant to understand the status of the decontamination and decommissioning work. Have a look at this report, made a few days ago, by Laurence Alexandrovich and our teams in Japan. During the tsunami, a 15-meter high wave destroyed four of the six reactors at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant north of Tokyo. Since the catastrophe, the government and TEPCO, the operator of the site, are leading the decommissioning of the power station, which includes the decontamination, which should be completed in 30 to 40 years. The power station has six reactors, all of them shut down. Reactors 5 and 6 were spared by the wave. Reactor 4 has been emptied of its fuel. After the tsunami, the first stage was to stop the reactors and prevent new emissions of radioactivity by pouring water on the installations. Cooling the reactors was the most important thing. That's why we started with that. And then we had to take care of the fuel pools. The second stage consists of removing the fuel present in the reactor pools and will take another 10 years. Last month, the removal of about two-thirds of the spent fuel rods from accident reactors was completed using robots. The third stage involves the removal of debris, a long and delicate operation that will take place in reactors 1, 2 and 3. It has been delayed because of the COVID crisis. On the site, 4,000 to 5,000 people work daily, many without protection thanks to the effort to decontaminate the site. But this is not the case in this essential section in the Alps facility. This American innovation specially created for Fukushima filters contaminated water. Here, the damaged reactor contains molten fuel and it has to be cooled permanently, so we pour water on it. The contaminated water that comes out is absorbed by a pump and is sent to this ALP system, and the radiation is practically removed except for the tritium to be finally stored in tanks. Tritium is a radioactive part of the water molecule present in nature, explains this specialist, who visited Fukushima three times. Tritium does not accumulate in the human body because it has a very short um, half-life. You, you take it up and then you excrete it again. Tritium generally is the least of the problems. The treated water is then stored in a thousand tanks containing 1.24 million meter cubes of water, but these tanks will be full in 2022. Therefore, this water will have to be drained, and two plans have been proposed, releasing it into the air or discharging it into the sea. This second solution worries local fishermen and farmers, who fear their products will once again gain a bad reputation and sales will suffer. The government is considering the best solution, which will be implemented in two years upon the green light from the Nuclear Safety Authority, an independent body created after the Fukushima disaster that oversees safety. These releases are commonplace around the world, says the IAEA expert. All nuclear reactors are authorized to release small quantities of radioactivity into the water and into the air. All this is subject to regulatory control. According to the experts, this accident is without common measure with Chernobyl. Chernobyl, for example, has released a huge amount of plutonium and americium, so Chernobyl will be contaminated forever. Fukushima is a completely different story, because what Fukushima released is basically radioactive cesium. The cesium-137 has a half-life of 30 years. Since the disaster, Japan has changed its safety standards for its nuclear power plants and is now sharing its experience with the world. According to experts from the IAEA, the International Atomic Energy Agency, who last visited the site last year, the methods, analyses and measurements of radioactivity are reliable. You'll find the interview of one of these experts on Euronews.com. Thanks for being with us on Spotlights.